Hi there, I wanted to do a quick demonstration to show the three common types of ionizing radiation, alpha radiation, beta radiation, and gamma radiation. And to do that, I've got a simple Ludlum Model 3 survey meter with a Ludlum Model 44-9 Pancake GM detector attached. This type of detector has a thin uh, mica window that allows alpha, beta, and gamma radiation all three to penetrate so I can demonstrate all of them. So to start out with, I'll turn the uh, audio on. I'm on the most sensitive scale, which is the point zero one scale. You can hear the natural background radiation there. As I approach with this polonium-210 alpha source, uh, alpha travels a very short distance, maybe uh, a couple of centimeters, an inch or two uh, in air. So you can see I've got to get really close uh, within an inch uh, before I can even detect that alpha radiation. If I hit the reset button here, I'll show it again. I've got to get right up on that detector before it starts to see that alpha particulate radiation. To demonstrate how easy it is to stop alpha, I've got a single sheet of paper that I'll slide in between the detector and the source. And you can see, it takes a minute for that to fall back down to zero, but it it's very easy to, to block out alpha radiation. Alpha is primarily an internal hazard. If you ingest or inhale material that emits alpha radiation, uh, it comes in close con contact with your body tissue and can cause harm that way. Outside the body, it's pretty harmless. It can't even penetrate the dead layer of skin cells on our body. To demonstrate beta radiation, I've got a uh, beta source here. And you can see already, several inches away, it's giving me a reading. So I'm going to range up to the times one scale here and hit the reset button but obviously the betas will travel farther than the alpha I'm going to set that there I'm going to grab my piece of paper and stick in here and you can see that the paper uh, doesn't do anything really to block that beta radiation but something like a sheet of plexiglass if I stick that in in between there that, that'll block it down and send it right back down to essentially background. So it's pretty easy to uh, stop beta radiation. It'll travel maybe 10 to 20 feet in air depending on the energy of the, the beta radiation or the source that you've got. Uh, the last type of radiation I want to show is gamma radiation. I've got a cobalt 60 button source here and it's not a real strong source so I can't show you the distance that gamma is capable of traveling. If you have a strong source, these, these guys could travel uh, hundreds of feet in air. But you can see here that um, what I can show you is the penetrating ability of this type of radiation. I can take again that piece of paper and stick in there and it's not going to do anything at all. If I take the plexiglass and put in there, again, that blocked the beta radiation, that doesn't do anything. It really doesn't block it out at all. What we need to shield out the gamma radiation is dense material like lead, concrete, steel, things like that. Um, if I put the lead, I've got some lead here that's wrapped in tape. I'll take a couple couple sheets of that and slide in there. Then I can range back down to that times 0.1 scale. And you can see that was pretty effective in blocking out that gamma radiation. But gamma is very penetrating. Uh, I can put my hand here and it'll penetrate right through my hand. In fact, it will penetrate through the back the metal back of the detector. So gamma is the one that, that's uh, most penetrating. We typically use time, distance, and shielding, minimizing your time and maximizing your distance and use shielding whenever possible to shield that. Okay.